Welcome everybody, Mr. James here, and we're gonna look at Bootstrap from Twitter. We're gonna get it set up in an ASP.NET MVC project, and this quick hit we're gonna to do today will be in Visual Studio 2010. I wanna show you just really quickly how uh, Bootstrap looks and why you might wanna use it. It's a CSS and JavaScript framework or library that allows you to really quickly integrate some cool UX features into your site. Now, it is available on GitHub. It's also available just to download Bootstrap and the various libraries directly from this site, but we've got a better option in Visual Studio 2010 10 and 2012 and it's called NuGet and the package manager console that's built right into our IDE. Let's have a quick look here. You can see that uh, from a scaffolding perspective it uses a grid system. You can use rows and spans. Um, you can offset columns much like we used to do when we were creating tables but we can do away with all of the rows and row span and call span nonsense that we used to do and we've got much more meaningful um, articulate uh, expression of how we want our layout to be. So semantically we've got some better options for how we're going to actually move things and organize things inside of our website. But what I really like about it is that we can jump in and without doing much effort at all get some really sharp looking things like buttons. Um, we can uh, adorn uh, some of our, uh, we've got some here, uh, append and prepend that we can use inside of our uh, form elements or alongside of our form elements. It also goes uh, further. We can set up different uh, sizes for our buttons, multiple states, and they've provided um, access to a CSS sprite from Glyph icons that gives us, um, I think it's over a hundred and some odd small little icons that you can use inside of other elements such as buttons. And because it's a CSS sprite, it downloads really quickly. So it's combining a lot of goodness here. We've got some JavaScript, some CSS3, we've got uh, CSS sprites. Um, it all looks, it all comes together and looks really good together, giving you a consistent UI and uh, feel across your your site and when you start to mux the things up together when you start using button drop downs with glyph icons uh, things start to really look like you've had the visual um, effort needed in order to produce a quality site where things really get interesting for me though of course is when the library itself self starts to mux things together so we're getting into split drop downs with default actions but overridable actions as well everything um, easily laid out as divs buttons you can put id things on them and interact with it with jquery and speaking of uh, jquery there's uh, 12 uh, custom jquery plugins that let you use this uh, great styling, this lightweight styling, um, and as well as these uh, adding these functionality components to your site really quickly. So things like Scroll Spy, which kind of tells you where you are on the page along with that, um, that header. As well, I mean, you do have the navigation options as well, so even the menu in this case is driven by um, Bootstrap. Tool tips. Um, there are drop downs, modals. Uh, here's a demo of the modal the way that it comes in for us very easy. I'm going to close that guy down and head back over. There's a, some popovers. Um, we've got uh, some extra functionality on buttons, using buttons with check boxes or radio boxes. Uh, there's, of course, the accordion, the standard accordion sample that you'll find in many uh, libraries such as this, but also a carousel example where um, just we've got some content that we want to rotate, and rather than going out and fetching a plugin for jQuery somewhere else, we've got it built right into this, um, this library that we're going to be using. Uh, there's a type ahead example as well, also known as an autocomplete. Um, you can see here, and it's uh, easy to interact with uh, with the keyboard as well. All of this is, I mean, you could start using this right out of box, and you're going to have a great site. But if you need to customize it a little bit and make it work specifically with your site, you've got that option as well. Um, Bootstrap is built with less, which allows you to take a... Uh, a special notation for CSS and then compile out the CSS later on. This lets you inherit styles from other uh, classes or specify a color one time and have that propagated throughout your CSS uh, document so that you don't have to go and do a find and replace on everything anytime you want to change a style. So by building uh, less into the project, um, running that with say example, for example, Web Workbench, um, but then also um, augmenting the experience with whatever we need to do, maybe customizing our uh, our column widths or reducing the number of columns. Maybe we want seven columns that um, 
125 pixels each instead of the standard 12 column by 90 pixel layout that they've got built in. So there's all kinds of things for that along with some examples. But what we're going to do here is just going to get started right out of the box and setting something up in Visual Studio 2010. I want to show you how easy it is to install Bootstrap into your project. I'm going to start up as I would any project, file, new project. I'm going to open an MVC4 application and call it uh, Bootstrapping MVC. And as soon as the tooling comes up, I pick the empty template and use that with the Razor View Engine. And I'm going to wait for the Package Manager console to kind of do its thing. Now, as you may know already, uh, the Package Manager console has been built in from SP1 moving forward. It's going to be in all of your Visual Studio projects. It really makes development uh, uh, inside Visual Studio so much easier because you can easily consume the enormous code base that sits out there in open source land. Um, right now, the, it is actually installing all these packages for me. Now, a package can be um, simply um, some JavaScript files and some content, but it can also be a complex uh, series of DLLs with dependencies and configuration that needs to be put into my web config. It'll do web config transforms for me, and it gets all of the interesting bits lined up for me using PowerShell. I open the Package Manager console, and I type install package Twitter dot bootstrap and just like that I've got bootstrap in my application we're gonna come back obviously there's a lot more to it and actually using it and styling our divs we're gonna focus on the components that are added as jQuery plugins but that's all you need to do to get started create a new project install Twitter dot bootstrap using the package manager console if you can't find it it's gonna be up in view other windows and you can easily get started, easily start poking around with something as simple as that. Go add the CSS to your layout page in your MVC uh, projects and under views shared underscore layout dot CSHTML. And right away you'll be using Bootstrap from Twitter. Uh, this is just a quick hit today. We're going to look at some more uh, advanced features and uh, simple implementation using the default layout that Bootstrap gives in as an example. Thanks for joining me. We'll talk soon.